Hi, and welcome to the latest in our Smart Pension Connect webinar series. In this series, I interview guests across the pensions and the fintech industries about a range of exciting topics. I'm Darren Philp, and I'm Director of Policy and Market Engagement here at Smart Pension. And today's topic is fighting the good fight, the war against pension scammers. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Margaret Snowden, OBE, who is chair of the Pension Scams Industry Group. Margaret, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. So um, let's 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 get underway then. Um, you know, let, let, let's start at the beginning. Yeah, um, you've been in the pensions industry for quite a while. You know, um, and you've seen a lot of change during that time. Um, what do you think has changed the most during your time within the pensions industry? What's different now than That's it different. was a few years ago? <coughs> it's interesting, and, and thanks for politely saying I'm getting on a bit. I was um, not inferring that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, actually. It's quite scary because I think lots of people that I meet now in the industry weren't actually born when I started working in the industry. That's quite, I that's quite scary. Yeah, yeah. That is quite scary. But nevertheless, um, what has changed? Um, it's an interesting question because some things have changed, but some things haven't. Mm. Um, and, and one thing that has changed is it's become bigger yeah. and it's become more complicated. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the sheer size and complexity of pensions. Um, and I joined just when things started becoming complicated and that was in the late 70s. Yeah. Um, and it's just been a barrage ever since then. So it's just got hellishly complicated and one thing I would like to do is to remove that complexity because it doesn't need to be. And, it, and it's a really interesting one isn't it because um, I was looking um, earlier on today at the, the Treasury and HMRC's um, normal minimum pension age consultation you know yeah. the one that is proposing to go from 55 to 57 yeah and there is a classic example there of just complexity 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 that's just being added all the yeah. time so it's not just the industry that causes the complexity you know um the government regulations and um you know um, fca rules and you know tpr guidance yeah it is a complicated landscape isn't it it is actually and i sometimes question why we need the complexity and we always justify it by it makes it safer mm. um, it makes it fairer um, but actually one universal consequence is it makes it more expensive yep. um, and the more expensive it is the less there is actually available for people and the whole point of a pension is to give an income mm. in retirement um, and you know the regulation, the rules, everything we've got to abide by, great up to a point, but there comes a point when it actually starts to drive the principle rather than, you know, the solution. Yeah, so, um, so it almost becomes counterproductive. Well, I, I think it does, yeah. but as, as we'll be talking about later, I'm quite sure, there are lots of people who will take advantage of whatever, and yeah. um, the complication has made it right for people to not really get it anyway yeah. and not understand it. So, yeah. so that has changed hugely. In the early days, nobody was that interested in pensions at all. So it kind of slipped under a lot of the radar, mm. but um, but now it's a full square. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's that's obviously been a huge change in the computerization and that, that sort of ongoing complexity and, you know, more to come as we know. Yeah. Um, so from your perspective, what does the future look like? Um, you know, and what do you think the key priorities for the industry, and perhaps given what we were just talking about, yeah. government and regulators, <laughs> should actually be to um, make a real difference to pension outcomes? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's actually quite difficult, um, you know, because, uh, you know, everybody's crystal ball has been thrown off a bit because we, we hit a pandemic. Yeah. Um, and actually, if I look at... Um, some of the horizon scanning that was done out there as a you know a possibility was a global pandemic mm. and but we wrote it off and didn't sort think one it in would a 200 year event or exactly whatever, yeah. so so how long it came so everything's a bit um, up in the air now good and bad but the the future has to be digital mm. i mean there's absolutely no question we'll never be able to go back um to doing everything manually mm. and who would want to anyway yeah. But, you know, while we'll be much more digital, that means we need to innovate. And one thing we're not 
good at is being innovative <clears throat> and, and we're almost being discouraged all the time from taking risks. It's almost become ingrained within pensions. You don't take risks mm. because you need to make sure that the future can appear. Mm. Um, well, the, the problem is if you don't take any risks, if you don't gamble, nothing changes. So I fear that the future 20 years from now could be something similar to the past 20 years ago. I don't think we've moved hugely in 20 years, mm. but we moved faster and more in the last 18 months because we were forced to innovate. Yeah. So I think innovation is essential, digitization is the future, but a lot of other things are going to change um, around that. Populations are getting older. And I do think we need to address the cost of running pension schemes. Yeah. So, so I see a future where it's, it's a bit more like you see elsewhere, whether it's you know Holland or where you, you see bigger schemes mm. that are that are run more effectively. Yes, yeah, so the consolidation is huge in gender at the moment. It is it? actually, and I can't understand why it's not firmly grabbed with both hands. Yeah. I, I really don't. I don't get it. But, but we need to do things better because what we keep saying and the mantra is always better member outcomes. That's what we say it's all about. But until we start looking at where the leakage is, yep. where the waste is, we won't get there. I really like your characterization of the last 20 years uh, versus what's going forward because you know computerization, it was almost like we were taking old processes and just putting them on a computer. Yeah. Um, and that's not the way to innovate. Correct. And when we talk about sort of, you know, improving admin, when we improve, improving about sort of innovation, we've, we've got to innovate. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just doing the same old things, but in a slightly different way. Yeah. Um, and I think that the industry will only ever innovate. And there's some good opportunities there with dashboards and all the things like Absolutely. that. If we approach it with a slightly different mindset. Absolutely, but we're not risk takers we're within not. pensions and, you know, I, you look at some of the some of the providers they're using systems that themselves are 20 years old mm. and they're just putting elastoplast over yeah. you know some of the the bits and pieces and um, any change is mammoth mm. um, it absolutely is and um, you know that's why I say we've got to be able to take some risks and spend some money to make a difference mm. and at the moment we spend a lot of money to stand still yeah um, one of the advantages of um, you know being a provider that's only been in the market for mm. five or six years is that we don't have sort of legacy platforms right. that were there 20 or 30 that's years ago absolutely and, and, right. and while you know it's a you know um, while, while being a new entrant has its challenges and stuff not having that sort of technical legacy or platform legacy yeah, is a it's, is, it's, it's it huge a it's, a, it's a gift really and um, and that's why you know 20 years ago, you know, sort of, I would have thought that some of the the more advanced um, technical companies would actually come into pensions. Mm. They didn't because they saw it's too hard yep. um, and it was too difficult. Yep. Uh, degrees of difficulty, you know, are different now. Um, and, and I think, you know, we will see lots of new players mm. coming in and some of the big, the tech giants might um, actually come properly into pensions yeah. now that we're really focused on uh, money purchase mm. um, DC pensions rather than DB. Yeah, when they get interest in it, that could be a game changer. It could it? be a game changer. It's a big threat. And, uh, you know, I would hate to see you regret risk yeah. with some of the, the professionals who know everything there is to know about pensions being overtaken or elbowed out, yeah. you know, because there's better technology. Yeah. So we need to think more forward looking, we need to innovate and we need to uh, absolutely. You know, give, give give our customers and members what, what, what they actually want. Mm -hmm. um, you alluded to this earlier, um, but you've spearheaded the work on, on pension scams. Um, and, you know, from, from my perspective and, you know, uh, from the industry's perspective, I think what you've done on that, driving that forward has been nothing short of remarkable. So, you know, thank you from behalf of the industry and from behalf of everyone. Um, you know, scams, it's a, it's a huge topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we're only going to scratch the surface now. But, um, you know, how have they evolved? Yeah, um, what, what are the latest trends? What are we seeing at the yeah. moment? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's quite ironic, actually, but the biggest growth in the industry has been scamming. <laughs> um, I mean, isn't that, isn't that terrible? I think, I mean, really, pension scams as we sort of 
but know them today started probably about 10 years ago. But you know, nobody was paying attention. No. Nobody recognised it. Nobody did anything about it until about 2013 when, you know, the burden came on individuals to look after themselves. And we had, you know, the, the Regulator Scorpion um, campaign, but that didn't really land mm. um, enough. So, um, so I, I set up the Pension Scams Industry Group to try and help the industry do the protecting. Mm. Not because I deep down felt that the industry must um, protect, but because it, it was emerging as the first and last line there of defence, actually. There, yeah. So let the providers, let the trustees do what they can to protect. But one of the one of the things that's allowed scamming to become so endemic is that the professionals had their hands tied behind their backs. Yep. The law didn't actually help the law abiding. Um, and we have this great fear of trying to tell people that they could be making a mistake, mm. that that you know, somehow is interpreted as maybe giving financial advice. Mm. And we need to get out of that yep. groove um, because the scammers aren't handicapped by any of that trying to do the right thing all the time. They don't have compliance so, people looking they, over they, their marketing. Ab absolutely, they? <laughs> they don't. They don't. They can, they can tell porcupines with abandon. But, but we, we started off with something called pension liberation. Mm. Now that was actually in response to a need. There was a need for access to pensions money. Mm. Um, the law didn't allow it, mm. so the best way to get it was to do a transfer to another scheme that would mm. let you do it. Now people don't understand pensions well enough to know that it's not on. Mm. You can't really do that. So that was the favourite method, transfer to another scheme and then lose lose your whole pension. Mm. It took a long time to recognise that. In fact, we still haven't really done anything about that. Um, what we did was we introduced pension freedom to try and give that flexibility. Mm. And that was great. It killed, to a certain extent, the liberators, um, not totally, but mainly. Um, but then we introduced the opportunity for transfer scams so that people would transfer out of DB pensions yeah. and into DC so that they could then claim the flexibility. So again, scamming is responding to a need. And, and what we ought to do within the pensions industry is respond to that need before the scammers do. So an evolution of the product it's, as well. It's and products yeah. need to change to fit circumstances. Yeah. And, and I really do get that pensions are meant to be for later life. But if you don't actually get there, um, or if somebody takes it away from you before you get there, it's been a wasted expense yeah. and a wasted journey. And we live our lives very differently now. And, yeah. you know, with, with freedom and choice and, you know, with the shift from DB to DC, you know, pension is more like an, any other asset. That's right. And um, we, I 100% I, I agree with you about pensions being an income and, you know, you know that's what mm -hmm. we should be aiming for. But it's competing against lots of other things exactly. now as well. And I don't think the industry and the products and the regulations have necessarily kept up with some of that. It, it hasn't. And I remember arguing years ago for greater flexibility in allowing access to pensions at particular times. Yeah. Um, and it's almost we, we feel that we somehow need to nanny, um, you know, sort of retirement planning, um, whereas we don't feel the same need to control people's bank accounts and what debt they um, take on. But um, but yeah, I, I still think saving for the future is a, is a brilliant thing to do. And generations before me did it automatically. Mm. Now we don't. The world has changed and, and pensions has to change alongside it. But we've, we've given scammers a fantastic opportunity and now they're they're moving more from db to dc transfers um, into 
later work, you know, when people have money in their hands, mm. they're actually using that. So if somebody gets a tax-free cash sum, they can be targeted. Yeah. If somebody decides to cash in all of their DC pension, which they can do, that's a pot of money that's right for the yeah. picking. Um, and scammers are there and taking that. Now, that's quite hard for us in the pensions industry to deal with because it's, 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 in, yeah. it's yeah. in the members' hands. Yeah. So it's, it's very, very difficult. But I still think educational help, mm. um, you know, to, to do that. But what I would really like and what I haven't seen is a lot of the scammers. We know a lot of the names. We know a lot of the schemes they've been using. Um, and they're still on the streets. And, and I think that's that's a real shame. So I, I set up uh, PSIG thinking in five years it would solve the problem because mm. we would stop money becoming available um, to scammers. And here we are seven years later, yeah. um, and we've only now just got regulations um, to help us stop the bad guys. Mm. But it'll only work if we use it. Yeah. And, um, you know, speaking of those regulations and stuff, um, you know, it is a big change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a welcome change. Yeah. Does it go far enough? And yes do, and no. And, and do you think the government and um, not just the government, but the sort of the, the bodies, yeah, like the police, the action fraud, you know, regulator, FCA, are taking this seriously enough? Mm, yes and no right. to all those yep. questions. Um, as I said initially, it took several years for a recognition yep. that scams was actually a problem. And actually, deep down in some government departments, there's still a feeling that it's the victim's fault. Um, so they let themselves be, be scammed or even worse, they were deliberately trying to avoid the tax um, advantage they get from a pension scheme. And, you know, that mindset is actually stopping um, a lot of action being I, taken. I wonder what departments you're talking about there. Well, but, yeah. I'm sure you can <laughs> guess it's reasonably close to your own heart. Um, but, you know, the change that we've got is fantastic mm. um, because what we've been asking for for years now is a tool to be able to say no. Mm. You, I mean, it's tragic when you see schemes doing a lot of work and they know that, you know, this transfer is a scam, mm. but they can't do anything because there's a statutory right. Um, the Hughes case made that very, very apparent. Mm. Um, so there was almost a, a, a swell upwards from doing a lot to try and stop people and trying to give them some help to clunk, we can't um, because there's a statutory right. So then it became the only solution is a legal one. Yeah. Um, so we've got that. Um, but if we don't use it, mm. because it is a last defence, mm. it's a look at a case and if you find flags, you've got the opportunity to say no. So it's not a blanket yeah. ban and it's not stopping transfers. And a lot of people think it will. Well, it won't. 95% of transfers are perfectly fine. They're not always the right decision mm. for the individual, but they're not scams. Mm. Um, so that means we're trying to stop 5%. And I think that's quite proportionate. Yep. So we need to think about that. Yeah. But I, I hear feedback saying it will be a real mess because we'll have to check every transfer value. Well, you don't. Because if you transfer, you know, to the Marks and Spencer scheme quite regularly, why would you do due diligence yeah. on it? That's daft. Yeah. But I mean, the, the regulations when they come so, out will give a little carve out. So, so it's almost like um, it, it, um, it's, it's not a white list because we do talk about um, a white list or a safe list. You're not allowed to talk about white lists and safe lists and anything. No, no, because um, of the um, yeah, the, because of regulatory liability and all of that right. type of stuff. That's but, right. But, but but ultimately, yeah, it, 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 secret a, lists. Yeah, then there's a there's a proportionality there. Absolutely. Um, we are we are struggling for time, um, <laughs> so I've got one I've got one further question. Um, and then we'll move on to five quick fire questions. Yeah. So dashboards. Yeah. Is this an opportunity to educate and engage people or does it sort of um, prickle your scams antennae? It doesn't actually. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a great fan of dashboards because I think transparency is one of the things we desperately need um, within the industry. And I think it will get us to pull our socks up 
a little bit. Mm. Um, so, and I was part of the original um, Treasury Steering Group yes, on that, yeah, yeah, yeah. on um, dashboards, and and we proved in a very very short time that it could actually work. Mm. Um, and I honestly believe if we'd kept on that path, we would actually have dashboards right now. And actually, we have dashboards right now. Mm. Um, I. I'm an advisor to one mm. um, where, you know, we take data from pension schemes, from banks, you know, from other savings institutions mm. and put, put them together. Yeah. That's a dashboard yeah. um, and it can be done commercially, but yet we're struggling. Mm. And I think we use all sorts of excuses to stop us doing it. Like we say, the data is terrible. We'll do something about it. Don't, yeah, yeah, data, yeah, we say it's it's really quite hard to transfer data. We'll deal with interoperability. Yeah. It's something we really need to do. Yeah. Get pensions into open data. We've got to do it. And the ones who are objecting are usually the ones that have got the legacy. They've got things that are actually quite hard to deal with. But this is an opportunity. I, 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 I agree with that. Mm. And um, you know, I think um, you know, giving power to people is people's data. And making it easier for people has got to be a good, a yeah. good thing. I've, I've tried um, for for quite some time. I proposed that um, you know we actually invest in the data mm. um, and open data, um, and that government should invest in that. Um, and it's a bit like the government's quite quick to say, "Build back better." We should use pensions funds to do that, but. If you think of aviation construction, government has piled loads of money into that to bring it up. Mm. We're 30% 30, 30 behind our competitors' countries in efficiency. Yeah. We need investment. So, so government could invest in pensions infrastructure while pensions funds invest in infrastructure. infrastructure. Yeah. Lovely virtuous yes. circle. Yeah, yeah. I should go into politics, shouldn't I? Yeah, you should do. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a great note to um to to, to finish the main questions on actually. But um, as as I alluded to, we don't let our guests go without answering um some quick fire questions and giving us some hints right. and tips. So <laughs> very short answers. Okay. Um, so and um, so so you know, thinking about your career, what was the one lesson that you feel helped you most throughout your career? Um, don't talk about what you don't know. That's a good one. Um, I'm sure lots of people could uh, <laughs> take a bit of that one. Um, um, knowing what you do know now, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, become a doctor. Now, is that a doctorate or no, a GP? A medical doctor. A medical doctor. Um, it's a long story behind that. Right, okay, well, that may be for, for another time. Um, if you could create a rule that everyone in the world had to follow, what would it be? Actually, given the way things are in pensions and the way things are in the world generally, I would like to see opinions and information very clearly differentiated um, so that if you're giving a, an opinion, it must be labelled opinion. Mm. And if you give an opinion pretending it's fact, it should be a criminal offence. It leads into the sort of fake news to everything. Exactly, that, exactly. It? So, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a really interesting one, actually. And I didn't expect you to say that. Oh. So that's, um, that's good. <laughs> um, what advice would you give? Advice or guidance? Let's be careful here. But what advice? Because we were let, we're, this is not in quite the regulated careful, context. Yeah, yeah. Quite. Um, what advice would you give someone starting out in their pensions career? I think identify somebody that you would like to be like. Yep. Um, and encourage that person to become a mentor. Yeah. I think I think I've seen mentoring. I've mentored um, three people and they're all leaders in the industry which I find very comforting. Um, and I think people should have that yeah. opportunity. Um, yeah, well, that's a good one. That's a good one. And um it's been quite a turbulent twelve to eighteen months, isn't it? Um, you know, with the pandemic and lockdowns yeah, and all of yeah. that type of stuff, um, not to mention everything that's going on in pensions. Um, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned for you yourself over the past 12 to 18 months? Yeah. Well, apart, apart from Zoom and resilience and being able to work remotely. And the mute button. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and the mute button. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, no, I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> um, I think it's um, using... A Zoom fake background does absolutely nothing for your hair. 
<laughs> I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You're, wouldn't you're know. perfect for Zoom, actually. What a great note to uh, end on. <laughs> um, so, Margaret, thank you very much for joining us. Um, time absolutely flies when you're having fun and talking about interesting stuff. Um, you've done some fantastic work on scams and you're well known in the industry. And, you know, long may that continue. And, you. Um, you know, um, I think there's there's still lots to do, isn't there? Which, mm. is, um, which is good. So, um, as I said at the start, and this is part of the Smart Pension Connect webinar series. So look out on the social channels and elsewhere um, for future ones of these. Thank you very much for tuning in and thanks for Margaret for joining us. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>